Greetings and welcome. Today we are going to be painting this right here, Moonlit Bridge. <laughs> Why are words not working? If you are watching this and you have any questions or inquiries, please let me know. Leave them in the comment section down below and be more than happy to help out. And if you finish this lesson and you'd like me to kind of look it over or share it with me, you can do so over at the Facebook page linked in the description. If you want the full hour-long HD version, you can find that over on Patreon, along with the digital sketch and reference photos and all of that fun stuff. So actually over a dozen hour-long lessons, so uh, go check that out, or if you just want to support the channel, that's also very nice. All of that said, let's jump into it. Greetings and welcome to today's hour-long painting lesson. We're going to begin here, as we generally do, with our large, damp, square-headed brush. Then I'm going to go to my palette grab a good amount of primary blue and a small amount of titanium white. I'm going to apply these two pigments to our canvas atop where we initially drew our moon, and I'm going to begin blending them out fairly softly. The goal here is to render a fairly consistent sky void of a myriad of brush strokes. This is generally best achieved by using a very soft touch of the brush. Generally, we receive a lot of brush strokes in our painting in our work, when we kind of grind the paintbrush into the canvas. That isn't what we're trying to do here. If you find that the paint isn't moving the way you want, if it's not as viscous or it doesn't have the consistency that you want, I would simply implore you to incorporate more water in your mixture. From there, I'm going to go back to my palette and I'm going to grab a bit of Mars Black and more primary blue. I'm then going to apply these two pigments to the top right hand corner of our painting and I'm going to begin blending it out in the same way that we did the initial portion of blue. From there I'm going to grab my smaller round headed brush, some wet titanium white paint, and I'm going to begin implementing our clouds. Now it's worth noting that these clouds, I'm beginning here at the bottom of our horizon, and I'm kind of blending the pigment up in a litany of very circular motions. The goal here is to ensure that the edges are soft and feathered. The middle of the cloud will be more dense, it will have more white in it, and then the outskirts of them, they get more and more transparent. Now here I'm grabbing some additional titanium white paint with my smaller round-headed brush, and again I want to ensure that the tops of these clouds are brighter than the bottom portions. I'm doing this because the light from the moon will be reflecting more so on the tops of these clouds. It'll dissipate as we get more to the center and bottom because the clouds get thicker and less light can penetrate that area. From there, I'm getting a lot of very watered down white pigment, applying it to the tip of my brush, peeling back the back of my brush, and launching paint at the canvas. This is going to render a plethora of different stars of different sizes on the canvas, and it's a very quick and easy way to do this. You'll also render implied markings on the canvas, smaller than what you would have been able to do innately with the brush itself and a tapping motion. From there, I'm going to take my medium-sized square-headed brush, I'm grabbing a little bit of white and black to desaturate the blue that I'm using here, and then I'm going to begin incorporating some mountains in the background. I'm using the medium-sized square-headed brush for our mountains because it has a sharp edge, and so do mountains. Again, you want to use a round-headed brush for softer subjects. You want to use a square-headed brush generally for sharper subjects. I'm beginning here with a fairly neutral blue mix for our mountains because the colors of the sky, the light in the sky, will reflect it down on them, and generally objects, subjects in the far distance will receive and absorb much more of the natural lighting in the sky. Then I'm going to go back to my smaller round-headed brush. A good amount of titanium white is on it, and I'm beginning to kind of tap on some detail here in the mountain. This could be snow, it could be highlight, it could be any number of different things, but I'm kind of creating little paths, and I'm doing it in a tapping motion to ensure that I don't get a consistent stroke and so that it doesn't blend as much. From there, I'm going to take that same small round-headed brush and I'm going to begin incorporating some fog at the base of our mountains. Now this fog is going to be fairly bright. As you can see, it's a mixture of our titanium white and primary blue. 
I'm working it in the same way we did our clouds in circular motions and I'm kind of blending it up into our mountains as you can see. Once we've ensured that the fog is entirely dry, we are going to grab our smaller square headed brush, ensure that it is damp, then go back to our palette and grab a good mixture of Mars black and primary blue. Then in a plethora of vertical strokes, I'm going to begin implementing a line of trees atop our fog. Now, upon initially looking at this, I felt my mixture was a little bit too blue, was a little bit too saturated. So here I'm grabbing a little bit of Mars black and titanium white, which mixed together to make a gray, which again mixes with the blue so you get this dark gray to blue color instead. From there, I'm going to begin working on our trees to the far right hand side of the painting. These are much closer to us, so perspective will make them look a lot larger. However, they're not at the point where they are in the real foreground, so they're not going to be very detailed, but they're going to have more detail than the ones that we just incorporated. Here I'm rendering some water right under where our moon is going to be, and we'll eventually also incorporate a bit of a reflection here in the moon. Now, I wasn't entirely sure how I wanted the water in this. Did I really want a dark water? Did I want a lighter water? Um, and so, you know how I figured it out? I went in, I just put some paint down. I started trying things. I started practicing. If it wasn't what I wanted, if it was too dark, okay, we throw in some white. If it becomes too desaturated, okay, we throw some blue back in there. Oh, is it too bright? Okay, we'll throw some black in there. Trial and error. There, I just drew in the base of a tree that I'm going to have in the foreground here. And now I'm beginning to add the foliage and the branches to the right and left hand side. They are going to get smaller and smaller as we move towards the top of the piece, and they're going to get larger and larger as we move towards the bottom. I'm now just adding in all of those pigments to the background. I'm kind of darkening the trees we have in the middle ground. Then I'm taking that same fog color that we used initially and I'm placing it at the base of our bridge here. I want it to look like the fog is kind of moving through the path in the forest and it's illuminated from the night sky. So now we are going to use a different color. That's right, we're using something other than primary blue, Mars black, and titanium white. It took us a while, but we're getting there. So here I'm taking a burnt umber from my palette. I'm using my medium sized square headed brush and I'm also grabbing a little bit of titanium white paint. I'm grabbing the additional titanium white paint and later a little bit of Mars black to thicken my pigment. Generally with acrylics, pigments like primary yellow, primary blue, primary red, and burnt umber are very thin. They're very transparent, which means you see the pigment underneath them to a point. I'm doing a lot of this in a tapping motion now because I want to create little mounds of dirt. And I'm doing that with a slightly brighter pigment than what our initial base layer was. Again, it's like building a house. We have our initial foundation, which is the plain color, and then we add the house on top, which is the highlighted pigments, the detail work. Now here I'm grabbing an old square headed brush, one where the bristles kind of leaf off in every direction. We talked about it at the start of the video. But essentially when you make a dabbing motion with it, you render a litany of different implications, which is great for things like foliage. So here, as you can see, I'm using this tapping motion and we're creating all of these little pieces of bush that are kind of coming up. I'm trying to ensure that I'm occasionally raising the brush more, I'm changing the way I apply it, just so we get a more random effect with our application. I'm taking the smaller square headed brush and I'm beginning to dab on some additional little pieces in the ground here, both highlights and darker areas towards the outskirts. It should be noted that the middle of the path should have brighter highlights and the edges of the path should be a little bit darker because the foliage and the clusters of bushes on each side will cast shadows down onto that main pathway. Now here I'm taking my smaller round headed brush and I'm just going back and employing some additional light into our moon. Then in a myriad of horizontal strokes, I'm beginning to apply that reflection down into the water as well. 
It's also worth noting that I'm blending out the reflection on both edges, and I'm trying to ensure that the middle area is yet again the brightest. Now, from there, I'm going to begin applying some foliage to our trees, and I'm going to begin doing so with my old square-headed brush. Here, I'm showing you what it probably should look like in quote-unquote real life. The highlight on the trees would be a bit of a blue, as you can see here, but again, I like artistic liberties. So I want to add some green into what we're doing here. Um, so I'm going to let that dry just for a minute, and then I'm going to take my smaller round-headed brush. I'm going to take a mixture of our primary blue and newly added primary yellow. I'm going to add a bit of titanium white to brighten it and to thicken the pigment. And then with a little bit of a dabbing motion, I'm going to add some green highlights to the edge of our tree. Now from there, I'm taking my older square-headed brush, as you can see here, and I'm beginning to add highlights to our bushes in the foreground. I'm taking a similar green to what we just used, but because it's in the true foreground, you might want to use something a little bit more saturated. Again, we use and save our most saturated pigments generally for our main subject and for our foreground. So it's so worth noting that I'm not covering the entirety of these bushes with this tapping effect and this highlight. I'm picking the tops of the bushes or areas that I'm going to decide are going to be the tops, the areas that are going to be receiving the most light, and I'm going to be applying it to them. Here I'm taking my old square-headed brush and I'm beginning to dab on the reflections of some of these trees. I'm using a very watered down mixture so that I don't get a stark, clean application and I get something that's a little bit more impressionistic. Now from there, I'm going to take a fairly dark mixture of a gray and I'm going to begin working on our bridge area here. I'm using the medium sized square headed brush because it has those sharp edges and this bridge is made out of rock and stone, which of course has fairly sharp edges. Now here I'm going back and I'm getting a bit of a darker pigment for the inner portion of our bridge and I'm using that same darker pigment for the bottom portion of our bridge. I'm using a darker area here because it's not going to be receiving as much reflective light. Yes, the bridge uh, outer portion that we did initially is opposite to the side of the moon so it's not getting any direct light but it's getting a lot of reflective light from the water where the middle portion of the bridge is kind of trapped, right? There isn't much light to be in, getting in and reflecting upon it, so it's going to be a lot darker. Then I'm taking a brighter pigment and I'm creating the hand railings on the top of the bridge, and these are much more illuminated, right? The light from the moon is directly hitting them, and so they are going to be a lot brighter. We are going to jump right back into our painting with our small square headed brush. I'm going to ensure that it is damp, then I'm going to grab a good amount of yellow and a small amount of red as well. The goal is to render a fairly neutral orange, which will generally require a lot more yellow than red because red is a much more dominant pigment. Then I'm going to grab a little bit of titanium white and begin to apply said pigment to our lamps. I'm using the small square headed brush because it ensures that with each stroke that the top, bottom, left, and right hand side are all very sharp. So rendering these is a very quick and effective process. As you can see, it's only taking a couple of little strokes. From there, I'm going to grab a good amount of titanium white and primary yellow, and I'm going to begin adding pieces of this into our lamps. I'm not covering the entirety of them. I'm still leaving pieces of that initial orange application to show through. I'm just trying to build it up and create slightly lighter areas. Here you can see we're adding more highlights to the edges of our lampposts and slowly building that up. I would warn you and I would advise you to use a little bit more of a red dominant orange initially for this part of the process because a lot of the surrounding areas of the lampposts is a blue and again you want to avoid that green for the most part. From there I'm getting much more of that orange and I'm still rebuilding around that lamp. Here we're getting a lot of additional yellow and we're going to add some additional highlights to our bridge. 
Now you can see a nice mix of the darker orange that we initially applied and the lighter yellow that we're applying right now. Now we've been doing a lot of touch-ups and highlights in the light sources and right now I'm actually going to go back to the sky and add some brighter clouds as you can see up here. We're using a fairly bright blue and I'm applying it predominantly to the tops of our clouds. Remember, clouds are best rendered with a small round-headed brush and with a circular motion of application. I'm trying to ensure that a lot of these are fairly soft and I'm occasionally blending them out with my finger. This is going to make them a little bit more transparent and it'll give it a bit more of a feathered edge. Here you can see that I'm mixing up more of a green and kind of reincorporating that in as well. If you find that it gets a little bit too orange, again, don't worry about it. You can let that dry and then you can go back in and rework in the greens. Hey there, it's Ryan O'Rourke. I truly hope you enjoyed today's little extra video. It was essentially a cut up version of one of the many hour long lessons which we offer over on patreon.com. Over there you'll also find digital sketches of the 10 minute painting lessons, digital sketches of these hour long painting lessons, and a bunch of reference photos as well. So if any of that interests you, or if you just want to support the channel, go over there and check it out. It is a pleasure to make these long form videos and I love to share them with all of you. So thank you so much for watching. I will see you next Saturday with a new video and above all, as always, stay creative.